Captain's log. Random year, fictional land. We set sail at landfall last night. At sea full land for whatever whatever. We set sail last night. For two hours we explored and what we discovered was that everything we'd accomplished had no permanency. There was nothing to it. However, it felt like we were on the precipice of something incredible, something amazing, something earth-shattering. But unfortunately, after two hours, we did not find it. However, I feel like deep down we will continue to explore, continue to discover, and perhaps know what secrets lie within the hidden chests. But that's enough of this intro as well, because you know what game this is. Let's just get to it. So here it is, Seafall Legacy. Now I know what you're thinking, that's not the official title. It's not, it's Seafall, a legacy game. But here it is, Seafall, a legacy game. Been waiting on this one for a long time, since it was announced pretty much, well maybe not since it was announced, but since I got my pre-order in. Uh, funny story, I emailed Plat Hat about wondering where my copy is, because I saw people showing off their metal coins online, and they said, you know, they found my order and it would be shipping soon, and lo and behold, when I walk outside, it was on my doorstep. Now, I'm not saying they sent it instantaneously, I'm just saying I'm an idiot and didn't check the mail first. So yeah. Anyway, what's inside of this box over here? Well, why would I want to start there? Let's talk about just some first impressions because all I have played so far is the prologue and it is a prologue. In fact, it feels like you're not doing a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know if I did this part correctly. Uh, these are stickers. If you want to freeze frame on this, I would say this review has zero spoilers. Some of you who are spoiler hounds might say, ah, there's massive spoilers. There's going to be no massive spoilers. There's not even mild spoilers, really. But I'm going to show you the sticker sheets. Um, if you freeze frame it, that means it's your fault that you got spoiled. You can't freeze frame something and then claim someone spoiled something for you. That's just... Anyway, so the only thing that we permanently put out was, like, iron linen and spice and stuff like that. Everything else just goes away. Nothing else happens. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the beginning or the end of your prologue. I'm just going to tell you that you do play the prologue. You pick a character just like the instructions tell you. You pick your uh, faction board, which are phenomenal, man. We're gonna look at these uh, components in a little bit. Red, look at that, it's got a unicorn, because, you know, that, that, anyway. Um, you name your ships, you can name pretty much anything in this. You can name the game if you want to. I mean, it's not official, but it's got the little name tag. That's the symbol basically for names, that little scroll. So anything that has that scroll, you can name. So yeah, it's creativity involved in it. If you like creativity, this is a game for you. Plus, metal coins. If you pre-order through Plathead, you got these metal coins. And honestly, since there is a little bit of downtime between turns, there's nothing like just doing this to annoy your friends, or even worse, Yes, but you'll never have that much money in the game, I've decided. Now, a few interesting things to note. Just kind of some overviews and first thoughts. I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to call it a full review of the prologue because it, you still need some time to digest it, but the prologue itself is really fun. Uh, I had a good time with it, but it is not going to be as good as the full game. And, and you saw in the intro the joke about being on the precipice. That might have been a little too on the nose. Okay, it was obviously on the nose. My point is this. You feel like when you play the prologue, man, something big is going to happen later in this game. Now, it just so happens we were kind of learning the game as we played, so the prologue took us about two hours. Once turns were learned and we kind of learned the flow of the game and how it moved, it moves a lot faster because of the way it's built, you take your entire turn. Now, we, the last game I played just two nights ago was Scythe. You take one action, then it's someone else's turn. You take another action, you know, it goes all the way around quickly. This one's a little bit slower because of the fact that you're taking your entire turn. Now, your turn's not that long. Enough. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk more about the prologue. So the prologue, you start and you're sailing around. You can do almost all of the actions that are in the book 
from the start, except for raiding each other. You can't raid each other. You can raid the islands and take their goods, and you read stories and explore, and you cross off stuff on the map. It makes it permanent. Now, the one knock against that is unlike a Pandemic Legacy, other game by Rob Davio, you might have heard of it, it's pretty popular, uh, that was a lame joke, is that there's some sort of story that flows cohesively because it's a co-op game and you have to do things in more of a uh, um, train track, railroad type story fashion. This is a railroad hand symbol. Anyway, you have to do that in a railroad fashion, but this one is a little bit more random because it's your choice. Hey, I'm going to discover this island. Well. Some people don't like the fact that that is an, it's a random thing that just has to be vague enough to tie into what you're doing. Ah, it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't so far in the prologue. Now, I just know that over here in all these boxes, there's going to be things to unlock. You know, look at this one. It's got an eye and a gate. This one's got a wave on it. I don't want to open this yet because you're not supposed to. But man, what I did want to find out was how much weight was in these. This is a pretty heavy little thing. There's some stuff in here. I just don't know what's in it yet. Dice are cool, the tokens are cool, the upgrades are cool, cards are nice, everything is nice, components are amazingly good. The boards are thick cardboard, they're not paper like the original version of Dead of Winter, uh, as being a Planet Hat game. It's just fun, it, it was, there's something more coming, we can tell, but we really enjoyed this. Now, what I do like about Seafall, and I'll kind of end the final thoughts here before we look in the box, is I, I love the idea that you can play the game however you want. Now, I don't mean that in the sense of like 504 or a sandbox type game, but it really almost is. If you want to be a traitor with a D, be a traitor. I suppose you could probably be a traitor too, considering you can give out these little reputation tokens and you could probably back off your word on that. So you could be a traitor too. Tom has not played a food card in three rounds. I vote that we exile him right now. You're not gonna win the game like that. If you're if your goal, if you want to be a traitor like a European style game, it's gonna make a lot of people very happy. Well, if I push this cube from this square to this square, I can sell them for six gold. How wonderful! Yes, you can do that. <clears throat> if you want to be like a, a sea pirate where you raid each other's ships and take their glory, don't actually give any glory of your own. You just take other people's glory, steal their treasure. You can do that. Oh, you scurvy devil! Give me all your. That was a horrible impression. I apologize. If you want to be a builder who just builds up your colony and your, your place, you can do that. If you want to be an explorer and get your glory through that, because glory is how you win the game, you can do it. The natives are on to me, but I think there's a site, an ancient dig site, close by, but I'm, I might lose my life finding it. There's so many different tracks to victory, but they're all thematic. They all fit. It's not like, well, you can collect this many things to... Dude, it makes sense. Obviously, if you're the faction as the renowned explorers and you're naming all the islands, people are gonna be like, wow, look at those people. And they're gonna remember them for a long time, people who explored. If you're the one building up this massive city, the civilization at your own home base, that's pretty cool too. You could be remembered for that. If you're a notorious pirate, you happen to have a black beard, people are gonna remember you. It's just how it works. So let's look inside what comes in the box. This is a hot mess right here, I'm aware, but that's just because I finished my final thoughts before doing this part. <laughs> and I was too lazy to put everything back to show you how it comes. This does not come in the base game. If you order this through a cool stuff or through something like that, you won't get these coins. If you go through Planet Hut's website, they might still have some of the coins available, I'm not sure, but this was kind of a pre-order bonus. So uh, the metal coins are amazing. Quality's there, they're thick, they're nice. They, they're not even, you know, they're, they're uneven shaped as if it was stamped. You know, kind of like a historical thing. You've got ones, fives, and tens. Those are great. Amazing component right there. You can use these for other games too. If you put these in Seven Wonders or things like that. Uh, it's just, they're amazing. Great metal coins. And everybody likes metal coins, especially in a pirate game. Spoiler-ish? No? Pretty sure you can tell it's pirates from the front of the box. Anyway. So in the box right here, you open it up and there are treasure chests, which of course, that's amazing. And if you get the coins, by the way, they come in their own treasure chests. Gotta love that. Treasure chest in here. These are some different tokens. These are fortune and reputation tokens. We'll talk about that later. There's cards in here, things like milestones and damage deck. There's a damage deck kind of like X-Wing. I know that make that comparison a lot. But this is an amazing concept. Uh, my ship took two damage last night and each ship repairs in different ways. This is not a spoiler, but if you're afraid of any kind of spoilery thing, then don't listen to this part. For instance, this ship is a leaking, this is a leaking damage card. Normally you would have to take the 
repair action to do it anyway, to get rid of these anyway. But this one also says, can't be a support ship. As a flagship, it gets minus one to all endeavors. Endeavors are things like raids and exploring, all those different things. Uh, it makes your thing worse. Uh, damaged instruments is a minus two to explore. All these are different things that cause you know problems to your ship. Very much like X-Wing. If you want to repair them, you have to take the action, which we'll look at in just a little bit, the uh, the actions for what you can do. You got your your um, your advisors here. You got John Foreman. He's the Foreman, but it's, I call him John Foreman because he looks almost exactly like John Foreman from the band Switchfoot. So, creativity. Again, I mentioned that over there. Uh, Jora, because he's a soldier and, yeah, well, whatever. Made up that name. Tim, because he looks like Tim Cook. I mean, come on. Anyway, all these are different different advisors in here, and I don't want to look through all of them because, you know, I don't want to tell you what they all are, but there's different things in here. Charter, oh, the round, these are the event cards. So every turn, you'll flip an event card, and you'll turn the astrolabe, which is a nice little round tracker dial, which you gotta love round tracker dials, from winter to the first turn and such. These are different things. This one says the round, all goods cost minus one gold each. That's great. It means you can sell for, or buy for less price. This round, they sell for more. A smooth seas, you get a plus one to your, sail, your sailing, plus one to your sailing as well. Good omens, this round each strong success, we'll talk about that in a minute, counts as two successes. Fog, each success in a raid counts as two successes. Each strong success in a raid, each strong success in explore. Uh, it's the two different cards there. There's only a few of these, however, since there's so many treasure chests over here, I imagine we will be getting more of those cards. Small cards in here. These are a sticker sheet that uh, you can make your advisors better. And then some secret event and such cards over here. Actually, I know there's going to be more event cards right here because these are covered with black cellophane and you can't see in them because they don't want you to know what's coming. Good plan. I like that a lot. Uh, that's probably the, the main appeal of this game is you just don't know what all is in here. Let's look at the dice real quick. Um, pull a few. I'll just pull one out. So you've got several different things on here. You've got a weak success, regular success, strong success, and a blank. And guess what the blank does? Weak successes on some of the places on the map, and I'll show you the map in a minute, will say you must re-roll weak successes. This is the strong success that that omen card was talking about earlier. That would count as two successes. It's not always, though, so that's kind of a neat way to change things up every time. got to love that. What I do love is this right here. Now, I don't know... If you want to call this a spoiler, go ahead, whatever. It's not really. You get one of the little fantasy flight peg dial insert things for this, for the astrolabe. However, there's another one in here. I don't know if that means that this is an extra. I doubt it, because the only game I've ever seen give anything extra would be a few extra bags in Caverna, and Side gives you extra um, explore tokens and counter tokens. Not sure why. So this is either extra, or there's another dial hidden in one of these treasure chests over here which you got to love the treasure chest look at that it's amazing how many how many games have treasure chests and all these are secret things and like i said they're pretty heavy they have some weight to them all of them do your own treasure chest over here you get your own faction treasure chest i'll show you mine because i picked the purple castle one over here inside of here i store my ships yeah probably would paint up pretty good if you had the time uh enmity tokens these things here it's kind of a permanent uh, memory system where people get angry at you if you attack their island, you raid their island, or you raid another ship or something like that. It's a cool system that has not been explored very much in the prologue, obviously. Um, you get a title. So right now I'll be the Baron for the next game. The reason we did this is in a four-person game, the Baron goes first. Uh, and then your player character down there, which you can look at those on your own. I'll show you the art of some of the ones we did not choose over here. And if I can get this stuff back in the box, look at that. It's, well, look, that's what's in mine, is um, stuff. Anyway, so on your turn, let's just run through that real quick. On your turn, what you do. Uh, you hire an advisor or buy a treasure. The treasure cards, I don't think I even showed you, they're in here as well. They are things that you get treasure. Oh, they're in the main. They're in this one. Anyway. You buy a treasure, they just give you uh, glory. That's a way to win the game. If you want to be a treasure hunter, you can buy treasure and win the game through glory. Uh, the other thing would be hire an advisor, and that's choose one of these advisors, pay the cost that they cost um, for them. And that's on this board here. You lay the advisors out here. You can pay the cost of one that's available. You then choose an active advisor. If you want to, you can activate one of your advisors and make get their bonuses. So for instance, John, the foreman, John Foreman, would get you an upgrade of minus four, uh, minus four gold. So an upgrade action, one of these little tokens up here, 
would cost you minus four. So the stalwart would now only cost 14 instead of 18. Uh, hail would cost you six instead of 10, and that's basic math. Uh, one of the other things you can do, you can trade one of the item, the um, components, what am I trying to say? The goods, you can trade a good token to get a discount of eight on treasure that matches the color and on upgrades and stuff that match the color. So it's a cool way to get cheaper things is by trading in goods. You say, I don't need goods. Why would you need goods in this game? They only sell for money. Exactly. They sell for money and they lower the cost of things like this. So that's what's good about goods. You then choose a guild. So on the back of here, it shows you all the guild actions. There's the wheel guild. There's the weapon guild. These are not the official names, obviously. There's the barrel guild. And then there's the hammer guild. That probably means something else. Anyway, you take two of the actions listed here. If you choose the guild here with the wheel on it, the explore guild, you can either sail and explore, sail and research, or explore and research in any order. But you can't choose two, two of the same one. So if you sail, you move your ship up to its sail uh, value, which I'll show you on the board here. So the sail value would be two. It's anything blacked out because you're going to continue blacking those out with a marker, not stickers, unfortunately. You then, you know, I'm not going to go through all these actions, but you do this. You, you go through the actions. You can watch Rodney's video on how to play. Uh, you choose two of these actions. There's all kinds of, this one gives you money. This one lets you sell goods. No ship required a location. You can do these anywhere. You have to have a ship with the right symbol and things here or the right uh, location here to buy goods. You have to be able to buy it from a place, obviously. But that's what's in there. Let's take a look at the ship board or your faction board. Your fields here. Yay, you make money from fields. Your warehouse is where you can sell goods from. You can build stuff at your place. War with, you don't get any of this explained to you in the first game, hardly. Um, in Enmity, that goes there. Your ship here, you can upgrade your actual ship. You can name your ship, upgrade your ship. All the different uh, stats of each ship. Your hold goes here. Your vault is where you put your money. Treasure room down here. Advisor room and your province. All of these have a story on the back about the province. So it's a really neat uh, storytelling kind of mechanic. But they're really well made. Everything has a place. And there's a place for everything and it's not confusing. That's the upgrade board. This is the captain's book. You gotta love the captain's book because it says do not open this flap until inspected to. So there's probably really cool stuff instructed to. Uh, over here's the map. Don't look real fast. Look, look fast and look. Don't look into the book. See, don't want you to look. Uh, you can scratch off your site so you can't go to the same site twice. That's how that works. Let's look at the actual main board real quick. And then we'll just kind of wrap this bad boy up because there's so much to say about Seafall that does not fit in one video, especially about the prologue. So let's kind of move this stuff here and I'll just show you. Uh, real quick because I don't want you to see what we did and I don't want you to see what's possible in the first one um, even though it's pretty obvious so your factions start up here this is their home base each one has its color this first one large space lets you move out into here and that way you can adjust yourself where you want to go in the waters because which is nice because this person is as close to this island as this person is as close to that island, which is great it's a good mechanic there uh, these are the different islands right here. Don't use a blue pilot pin because that clearly did not work, as I'm seeing here. We'll have to fix that somehow. Uh, you name your islands and all that kind of stuff. And that's it. That's what you do in your first one. These are where the islands are going to be placed. The cool thing is the islands are stickers, so they will get placed wherever you decide to place your islands, which is pretty beautiful. I love that. Uh, I don't know where that rubbed off from, so I'm kind of upset about that, so I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, that's Seafall. I mean, that's, that's what there is to it. You have your treasure chest, you put your stuff in a chest, and you play the game. You find stuff, you explore, it's, it's just exciting. Because you know you're on the precipice, you know you're there. You're just not there yet in the prologue. You just don't have it. All the things that you know are gonna be amazing about this game, just from the theme itself. You're exploring, Rob Davio has been calling it uh, Indiana Jones and the Age of Sail, which tells me, considering there's a large threat at the end of each Indiana Jones flick, some of my favorite movies of all time, that there will be some things that go big down in this movie, in this uh, game. So just know that that's possible. So First Blush really likes Seafall. I, I, yes, there's not a lot to do in the prologue. Just know that going in, it's underwhelming the prologue. But here's something, just the last thing I'll end on this. Because people got this at Gen Con, 300 copies, and they ran for it, One last thought. Because people did get this at Gen Con, they ran for it and got their copy of it. They, they've been doing reviews already, and most of the reviews 
are basically things like, wow, I really wanted to love Seafall, but I didn't, blah, blah, blah. They open up some of these boxes and go, wow, I love Seafall a lot now. Here's the thing. My hype was super high for this game until I saw those reviews and I was kind of like, uh, I don't like to let reviews damage my view of a game. But what it did do in a positive way was temper my hype a little bit to where it was here to now it's kind of just a normal hype for this game. You know, I was excited about playing it. Playing the game with that amount of hype level instead of the super high hype level made the prologue, even the prologue, so much more enjoyable. Now, I've got a group of four, my wife and two of our best friends who are going to play with us. They're gamers. And this is a pretty heavy game, but I would say just knowing, okay, it's going to start a little bit slower. Help me enjoy the game so much. So I would really encourage you to, to not worry about hype or anything like that. Just know the game's going to start slow. We have not... I have not found any evidence that we're even going to open these first couple boxes anytime soon. I, I don't know. Pretty sure you do that through milestones and such like that. But anyway, that's just kind of our first thoughts about Seafall, the very first prologue game. We haven't even played the first game yet. I mean, there's stickers. Look at these stickers. We knock the box over. There's a captain's book over here. All this kind of stuff to look at. So we're excited about playing Seafall a little bit further. For more reviews, check out the latest retro our channel right here. Please subscribe. Please tell everybody you know. I know every video ends with those words, but if you could, that would be helpful. Thanks.